in, in your book, you write about uh, Elvis had his spiritual quest, and you write about Diamata. Can you tell a little bit about this uh, quest and about uh, Diamata? I sure can. Um, you know, Elvis had, uh, even, it was so interesting. Most people start searching for answers to life when things go wrong for them, when there's a tragedy in the family or they lose, they lose a loved one or a job or a relationship. People start looking. They want to they know the, the deeper answers to life itself. In Elvis's case, we have a person who had everything, fame, fortune. He, had, he was young. The whole world was in front of him. He had millions of fans around the world. He had everything that life had to offer and even more so. And yet at the same time, he had this inner need because he wasn't fulfilled. And he would say, fame and fortune, money, fame, that's not the answer to life. There's more to life than that. There's much more. And Elvis was on a quest to find out answers that are in the Bible and in other teachings. And I gave him several books and he read them. In fact, he read books every day of his life. We had a tremendous library and he, I told him about this lady. <clears throat> Her name was Sri Diamata. Uh, she was a, uh, an American who took on a Hindu name, and she was the president of Self Realization Fellowship that was started by Paramahansa Yogananda, a man who came over from India to America in the 1920s started Self-Realization Fellowship, which today there are centers around the world. In fact, he wrote many books, and the first book he wrote was called Autobiography of a Yogi, and it sold millions of copies. And um, people like Marilyn Monroe read it, George Harrison read it, uh, Steve Jobs of Apple, that inspired his life. Well, it inspired Elvis as well, and he wanted to meet her, and he knew that I knew her. I set up a meeting uh, in Los Angeles, and one evening around 9, 10 o'clock, we went to the headquarters of Self-Realization Fellowship, which is called SRF. And we went there and we sat with her and Elvis just opened up and told her how much he enjoyed all the books that he's been reading and he loves to meditate. And he said to her, I want, I want more teachings. I want you to give me whatever you can, which she did. And she turned around and she picked up a, uh, a very special book that was never published and gave it to Elvis. She said, I want you to study these. These are very special lessons. And Elvis treasured them. And he became very close to Sri Diamata. He would call her Ma. And he would call her up on the phone. And over the years, we would go back to have meetings with her. Now, as I mentioned, there are several uh, self-realization fellowships in Los Angeles, and one of the big ones is right by the Pacific Ocean, and it's called the Lake Shrine. It's about 14, 15 acres, and there's a lake, and there's swans, and it's a very, very beautiful grounds, and people from all around the world go there, and on a, at a special place on the lawn, 
there's a big urn that had some of the ashes of Mahatma Gandhi and Elvis never was there before. And they have a big meditation garden. So I took Elvis and when we walked and when we were driving there, he said to me, do you think anyone's going to bother me? Are they going to run up to me? I said, no, Elvis, it's a very, very spiritual place. People go here for calmness, for serenity. The, the whole grounds is very peaceful. It has a windmill and a chapel. And let's go. Don't worry. And we had a few of our people with us. I said, there'll be no one's going to bother you. So we walked around the lake on a beautiful path. And people walked by and they were not at Elvis, but no one came up to him. Everyone was very, very respectful. And when we left that afternoon, Elvis said, man, this place is so beautiful. I'm telling you, this is exactly what I want. I've got to have a meditation garden. And this is how and the reason why there's a meditation garden at Graceland. Because when we came back to Memphis, that was the very first order of the day. Elvis started to create a meditation garden right to the side of the mansion and brought in contractors and various people. And they worked on it for many months. Little did we know in our wildest imagination that that was going to become the final resting place of Elvis Presley. Mm -hmm.